Welcome to Fanax Crank. Hope you're excited. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, we'll keep it. Love this one. We've got uh, Contraband Kingpin, which is just, oh, I love this card. <laughs> it's kind of like whenever you build a commander deck and you have one of those, um, what is it, those like pet cards that you just absolutely love. It's definitely Contraband Kingpin. Um, let's go and get down uh, Drowned Catacombs, which I've already played, and then anything else we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Let's get Fanax popped back up. Uh, we're playing Fanax, God of Deception. We're playing Mill, uh, but not traditional Mill. I'll kind of explain that here in a second. Um, Indestructible Devotion 7 turns into a creature. Then creatures you control have tap. Target player puts the top X cards of their library into the graveyard, where X is this creature's toughness. So, pretty fun off of that. Uh, let's go and lead off with Dark Slick Shores. Uh, let's go and get down Contraband Kingpin. That's going to be blue and then black. And then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Playing gets Tesa, Envoy of Ghosts. Vigilance protection from creatures. Uh, whenever a creature um, whenever a creature does combat damage to you, you destroy that creature. Create a 1-1 white and black spirit creature token with flying. So it's been a little bit while since I've played against Tesa. But always it kind of makes for an interesting match, especially once they get to that 7 mana, get her down, and just really kind of start going to town. <laughs> it's always pretty fun. Your opponent's going to get down Shrine of uh, Loyal Legions, and they're going to pass the turn back over to us. Um, we'll actually be online with Contraband Kingpin, uh, having an artifact enter the battlefield uh, with Silas Ren or, Invent um, or Scrap Trawler, so we're actually A-OK -okay on that. Let's do this. Let's go and get down Inventor's Fair. We definitely want to go for Scrap or Silas Ren, so let's go and get down Inventor's Fair. And then let's go ahead and go for, yeah, I think I like, I guess Silas Ren or Scrap Trawler is going to give us a little bit of a better clock against our opponent. Yeah, I like that. Let's go for Scrap Trawler. That's going to be one, two, three. And we'll go for Silas. We don't really have any sort of graveyard action going on at this point right now. So we're just going to get down Scrap Trawler. And we'll get that lifelink going. Uh, once we swing in for one, and we'll get that Scry going too um, once it enters the battlefield. All right, Gilded Lotus. I'm just going to put that on the bottom for right now. I'd like to draw into some sort of land uh, if possible. Let's go and swing in for one. It's so going to knock our opponent down to 29, and then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. We did cover both commanders. It's free time. We can talk about whatever we want. That's going to be, what are we doing with this particular deck? So, uh, like I mentioned, we are playing um, Mill in here, but we're not playing traditional Fanax Mill. Uh, most of the time, we're not really going to be going for a ton of activations off Fanax. I mean, it is a possibility that we can go for that. Uh, but for the most part, what we're trying to do is win through the Minecrank combo. Um, if you're not familiar with the Minecrank combo, it involves Dustmantle Guild Mage and Minecrank itself, which is just my absolute favorite uh, my favorite combo to play and this is the deck that I play in modern and I played for a really long time so I wanted to build an entire deck dedicated to Minecrank and here we are it's Fanac so it's still Mill just a little different approach on Mill if you want to view it that way uh, let's go and get down to Larry of West we're, yeah we're okay with that we're going to go play that one having to come play tapped and do we want to transmute something for three yeah let's go and transmute typically what we use transmute for is to um you can grab something that can very mana cost too. Uh, we might end up grabbing some sort of mana rock at this point right now because we need to get something going on our side of the battlefield. We'd like to get to Tezzeret, uh, excuse me, if possible. Let's go and get this popped out just a little bit. You know, let's go ahead and go for Mind Stone. That way if we need to crack it and draw a card, we can definitely go for that one. So let's go and grab Mind Stone, and then anything else, we're gonna go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, we can go and swing in for one if we want to. Um, yeah, well, let's just go and leave up a Contraband Kingpin. That way if our opponent wants to get um, a little frisky with the uh, Doomsayer that we can at least kind of hold up Contraband Kingpin and not worry about Thraben Doomsayer coming in to tell us that the world is going to end. But yes, I love the Minecraft combo, so I wanted to build an entire deck around it. And once you kind of start adding some different artifacts to kind of support that combo, I was like, well, we don't really have a Tezzeret build. So I was like, why not? Let's just build like some sort of Tezzeret build. And here we are. So I've got a ton of Tezzeret Planeswalkers in here. Um, the only downside is that we don't get to run the Thopter Foundry combo. It actually works out really well with the Minecraft combo, at least in modern. And so uh, Tectonic Edge, awesome. We hit the land drop. Uh, let's go and get that down. And let's do this. Let's go and go for Mind Stone. It's going to be one, two. Get that lifelink going. Or, excuse me, the Scry. Underground Sea, definitely put that on top. Now let's go and tap out for Silas Ren. That's going to be um, black, blue, and then uh, color. Let's go and get that down. We'll get the additional scry going too, but we're going to go and leave that uh, underground sea on top of our library. Uh, that way we can draw it into it next turn. Let's go and put that on top, and then anything else. Now we can swing in with Scrap Trawler if we want to. Um, that'll probably get our opponent to make a some sort of um, and like a human token on the battlefield. Do we want to swing in with that? 
Uh, we'll just go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, we are online for uh, Tezzeret, Master of Metal next turn. Um, so what we can do is start plussing up on that one. And then hopefully with us having a 1-4 on the battlefield, a 3-2 and a 2-2, two, two, uh, we can really kind of stop some of these tokens from coming across. And then if our opponent does end up cracking Shrine, uh, creating those uh, colorless mirror artifact tokens for three mana, uh, what we can end up doing is just simply just going for a damnation and then we'll be good to go. Now we will have Scrap Trawler whenever it dies or another artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. We can turn target artifact that costs less. Uh, so if we want to, and we didn't going for damnation, we can go ahead and crack Mindstone uh, to get a card draw. That way we have at least something to kind of bring back uh, off a of Scrap Trawler. Okay, so our opponent does pass the turn. We're going to have the Inventor's Fair Trigger, uh, which is basically going to have Metal Craft. We're going to gain life and go back up to 32, and then we do draw into Underground Sea. Uh, that does put us at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, 7 total mana. Yeah, let's go and go for Tezzard. I like going for that one. We can protect it right now at this point. It's going to be Black, Blue, and the Tectonic Edge, Inventor's Fair, and tap out for one more Black. And let's go ahead and go for, we can't go for the minus three ability if you wanted to, but uh, let's just go and hold on to Tezzer at this point right now. Let's go and go for the plus one. And they draw into Talisman of Dominance. Okay, we can't get that down, unfortunately, but at least we can get it down next turn. And then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. All right, opponent gets an additional trigger off Shrine of Loyal Legions. Now, what we could be doing is we could be getting Fanax down and we could be going for a lot of milling action. Um, we are playing against a black-white deck that, might care about creatures dying so um, this is me probably being a little overly cautious but um, we may not be trying to mill our opponent out uh, just yet simply for the fact in case they have some sort of reanimator spell something like living death um, I play a lot of aristocrats so when I play against a black white deck that might be an aristocrat style deck I always like to respect that and so plus you know we can get we can get in some pretty good work with something like Tezzard on the battlefield and just really slowly generating some value. I would hate to somehow just kind of give our opponent some sort of advantage by um, milling them out, you know. Sorry about that, I had a small hiccup. Uh, but yeah, we don't really want to give our opponent an advantage by milling them out when we can slowly kind of just take the game hopefully on our side of the board by getting down a ton of artifacts. And that's another thing about why we do the Minecraft combo within Fanax is that the Minecraft combo is infinite. You know, when we go for the combo, it's over right there. You know, other than them having something like rally the ancestors or something like that uh, they wouldn't be able to take advantage of that one so um, that's that's one of the main reasons why i like the minecraft combo but uh, but yeah as far as thopter foundry combo i love playing that one too it's kind of funny is um i like to play a lot of commander and i'm pretty nice in commander uh, but when it comes to modern i get those uh, brass knuckles on it's like it's game on <laughs> i can't tell you how many times i've played minecraft in paper uh, paper events and the opponents the look on my opponent's face when they ask me, he goes, is, is this infinite? And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Hope you have fun. All right, so we're going to get the Inventor's Fair trigger. We're going to go up to 32. Um, let's go and go for the plus one off of Tezzeret right now. And once we get to the point where we get to nine, that's going to put us at three um, activations in a row off the, ooh, we're drawing a crawl space. I like it. Uh, let's go for Ghost Quarter. Uh, let's go for the Contraband Kingpin. Let's get down Talisman of Dominance. That's going to be Mind Stone. Actually, let's leave up Mind Stone. Let's go for Ghost Quarter and then Inventor's Fair. Get down Talisman of Dominance. We're going to be able to scry one. And this uh, vampire does not have flying. Uh, Scalding Tarn. Let's go and put that on the bottom. Let's tap out for uh, Crawl Space. We're going to get an additional scry one off of this one. You can see where, ooh, seat. Yeah, we'll definitely put that on top because it actually gives us an additional scry uh, off Contraband Kingpin. Um, anything else, let's go and pass the turn to our opponent. So we were able to get down Crawl Space. Um, it's basically going to make sure that our opponent can't attack it except for two or more creatures. I mean, two or less creatures, which is exactly what we want to happen. Really want to kind of, we're not running a ton of stack effects in here, uh, but we are running some stuff that really kind of makes it hard for our opponent to kind of do their game plan. And so you can see where we have a deck like Tesa where it has just a ton of just kind of go wide strategy get a lot of tokens on the battlefield at least this particular version does uh, getting down something like crawl space is definitely more than enough to kind of help you uh, at least kind of stop them from swinging in uh, we also do have the um, ensnaring bridge in here which is also really good kind of keep our opponent down sometimes so we'll see what else they're going to roll out so they're going to be swinging with a human token and see what else they're going to go for Okay, so we have a 2-1 and a 2-1 um, let's go ahead and go contraband kink do we want to chump block they're both swinging in at Tezzeret yeah, let's do this. So let's go ahead and let's go Contraband Kingpin on the human token. And we're going to go Scrap Trawler. Those combat damage to a player, choose target, you may cast it this turn. Let's go and do Silas Wren on the vampire token. Or we could go for Scrap Trawler. Can I get that recursion going? 
Let's go and leave up Scrap Troll at this point right now. So we'll go ahead and jump block on these two. Definitely want to keep Tezzeret on the battlefield. And worst case scenario, if we need to go for something like Tezzeret, we can go for Damnation next turn to kind of clear the board up. We can at least still go ahead and protect Tezzeret and then kind of go from there. All right, so Silas Ren goes into the graveyard. And opponent's going to go for Sins Enlistment, Retrace, um, Create Two Kithkin Soldier Creature Tokens. Now with our opponent looking like they might have a really heavy black-white tokens build, we might try to get down Fanax and kind of start milling them out. Um, that would be something that we can go for. That does put them online for a, um, what is it, Lingering Souls out of the Graveyard, if we, we need to watch out for that one. But um, I don't think that would be the least of our worries. So they're going to get a couple Kithkin Soldier Tokens onto the battlefield. And let's do this. Let's let's go ahead and crack Mindstone. We'll draw into that um, that artifact land on top of our library. Um, we're getting to the point now to where I'd like to keep Tezzeret on the battlefield. And um, yeah, going for Damnation next turn. It kind of sounds like it might be a pretty good option. And then do they have enough to go for the Shrine of Loyal Legions activation? They do not. Okay. All right. So we have Inventor's Fair. We're going to gain another life off this one. So we draw into, draw into Underground River. Let's go ahead and get Seat down. That way we can get that Scry going. Phyrexian Metamorph. Yeah, let's go and do that. Let's go and grab Phyrexian Metamorph. I think I like this one. We'll leave that on top of our library. Um, let's go ahead and go for... Let's go ahead and plus up on Tezzeret. Actually, we'll draw right into um, Phyrex, Phyrexian Metamorph. I think I do like that. We're going to plus up on Tezzeret. Draw into Phyrexian Metamorph. And then we don't necessarily need to swing in at this point right now. Now, if we end up going for Shrine, so the beginning of your upkeep or whatever you cast a white spell, put a charge count on this. We are looking at about nine tokens coming down next turn. That is something we have to watch out for, especially if they tap out for that one. Do we want to Phyrexian Metamorph on anything? Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and go for Damnation. It's going to be double black. And we're going to tap out on Talisman of Dominance. Destroy all creatures. That's going to allow us to bring back Mindstone. We could swing into this particular board state, but it's not really going to do much. They're going to be able to chunk block with a few of these creatures, and we're going to be able to bring back Mindstone 2 off of this one. Now, let's go and get down Mindstone, and we can still go and pay that extra life to uh, go for uh, Phyrexian Metamorph, making a copy of Talisman of Dominance. All right. Excuse me, it's going to hit the battlefield tap of Blind Obedience. I forgot about that. Uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, we did blow up the board. That puts us in um, going for one more Tezzeret activation. We can start to go for that minus three ability. Uh, target opponent loses like equal to the number of artifacts we control. So at this point right now, we're looking at about one, two, three, four. We'll have five once we get down Phyrexian Metamorph. Um, one thing that we can do is so if we really want to kind of increase or start kind of going for that Minecraft combo is we do have Inventor's Fair, so we can use that four mana activation to search our library for an artifact card. So if we kind of draw into one of our combo pieces or something that allows us to dig a little bit deeper, uh, we'll kind of see how that, um, if that Inventor's Fair wants to push us in any certain particular game plan. Okay, so our opponent ends up going for a bunch of mirror tokens, and now we are sitting with Tezzeret sitting at a minus eight. So what we can do is with them going for that shrine activation, we can go for the, um, you know, you always want to, I always enjoy going for the Tezzeret, the minus three ability. Target opponent loses life equal to the number of artifacts they control. But yeah, our opponent just saw it. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is we go for that minus eight, gain control of our artifacts and creatures target opponent control. So what ends up happening is next turn we go for that minus eight ability. Uh, we're going to be able to gain control all of those mirror tokens and then start swinging in at stuff like Soren. And that, that could have put them on something like a board wipe or something like that one but i'll probably still go ahead and post this video up since i haven't done a finax video in a long time but yeah so basically we're gonna be able to close it out uh, with that minus eight ability and then very slowly start working towards that migrant combo after that if we needed to but let's kind of see what we were maybe going to draw into one with the machine would have been nice to get a little bit extra card draw. There we go. So we probably would have ran into, finally would have run into Grim Tutor or something that would have allowed us to grab one of our combo pieces. And then uh, having Fanax off to the side would have allowed us to kind of mill out our opponent on this one. But you can see where Tezzeret, Master of Metal, is going to be able to get it done with that minus eight ultimate with a little help from our opponent off that Shrine of the Loyal Legion. So anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.